Brooklyn Independent Television. With the primaries less than two months away, many local candidates are out in force trying to win votes. This holds most true in the 33rd Council District, where Councilmember David Yasky has chosen to give up his seat to make a run for City Comptroller instead. Sherry Carabin talks to the Democrats vying to take his place in a district comprised of diverse neighborhoods and issues. My name is Ken Bear. I'm running for City Council. How are you today? The sights and sounds of the campaign are hard to escape in Brooklyn's 33rd Council District as seven Democrats pound the pavement and put out signs to gain name recognition and let voters know where they stand on the issues. I want to get a sense of what your issues are. The race is a hot one after two-term council member David Yasky decided to vacate his seat in order to run for New York City Comptroller, leaving the field yeah. wide open. Okay. Ordinarily, if the incumbent were running, we wouldn't see okay. eight candidates or seven candidates right. in this case in the race because the incumbent in many instances does win re-election. Diana Klebenow is adjunct professor of political science at Long Island University's Brooklyn campus. There is name recognition. The incumbent has presumably performed valuable services for his or her community. And therefore, seven candidates wouldn't rush to uh, run for the seat. The district itself is made up of many different neighborhoods, ranging from Brooklyn Heights, Park Slope, and Borham Hill to Greenpoint and parts of Williamsburg perhaps helping to explain the wide variety of candidates. In Williamsburg, longtime community activist and small business owner Isaac Abraham is vying for the seat. My slogan has always been, if it's not right, stand up and fight. Take a look at my long history. Fought rent increases, fought for better transportation, fought for cheaper and cleaner uh, transportation as well. Abraham has lived in Williamsburg for more than 50 years. His efforts and reputation earned him the label of neighborhood fixer from the New York Times. His candidacy is somewhat historic as well, since if elected, he would be the first Hasidic council member. Indeed, Williamsburg does have a large Hasidic population, but Abraham says he's made a practice of tackling issues that affect all members of the district, and he's hoping voters will look at his record when making their decisions. I don't want you to really go into that voting booth and vote for me to make history as electing the first Hasidic Jew. I want you to go in there and take a moment just to look who is going to be the most responsible and the most vocal candidate. I can be reached at a very interesting number. It's called 1718 Stand Up. And the reason for it, because if you're looking for somebody to stand up for your needs, stand up for your rights, I think if you vote for me, you'll vote for the right person. Yasky's former chief of staff, Evan Thies, has also thrown his hat into yeah, the race. Thies lives on the Williamsburg-Greenpoint border and believes his former job has given him the skills necessary to take the reins as council member. I spent five years in the council. I learned how to pass budgets. I learned how to pass laws. I wrote about a dozen laws, and I know how to get things done. And over the next two years, we're going to have a lot smaller pie that we're going to be trying to get a piece of here in this community. You're going to need someone in there that knows what they're doing. Yasky has failed to endorse Thies or anyone else in this race. On the other hand, candidate Stephen Levin has the endorsement of his boss, Assemblymember Vito Lopez. Levin, who did not make himself available to Brooklyn Review for an interview, has also been a community organizer in Bushwick. He lives in Greenpoint and is currently Lopez's chief of staff. As chief of staff, he's had a lot of responsibilities and knows people in the community and has you know, fought many things that are of interest to the constituents. Then there's teacher and civil rights lawyer Joanne Simon, the only woman in the race. It's high time that this district was represented by a woman. This is a district with a lot of, uh, um, uh, of disparate elements, but a lot of common elements as well. And I think that a woman's perspective on bringing people together is something that would be very helpful in this community. Like the other candidates, Simon does not hold elective office. However, she is the female Democratic district leader and state committee woman for the 52nd Assembly District. She's also perceived by many analysts to be the front runner, having raised more money than her opponent and having good name recognition in the district. While Simon believes there are many important issues, she says development is key. That affects so many things. It affects our educational system. It affects where the 
the, the population demographics are. Well, I've worked for years for community-based planning, and we've created a model right up the street here, the Hoyt Skimmerhorn, which was um, an urban renewal district that for 30 years no, nobody could get behind anything that worked. We came together with consensus principles, and now we're developing there what it is that these neighborhoods wanted. It's a model that says we can make those tough decisions, we can work together to do that, and I think that's what we need to be doing more in the city of New York. Thank you. Okay. Have a nice day. Environmentalist and accountant Ken Baer also believes the focus should be on development. Uh, the mayor is pushing an agenda so that uh, he, his legacy will be that uh, he created uh, a situation where we can add one million people uh, to the city. And I don't necessarily think that that's a good thing the way he's pursuing it. Uh, we need sufficient infrastructure in order to allow for uh, an increase in population. And it's not sufficient now. And whatever gets built needs to be done with community input. Both Bear and candidate Ken Diamondstone adamantly oppose the Atlantic Yards project. Low and moderate income housing developer Diamondstone served as vice chair on community board two in 2005, giving it a clear thumbs down. I was the first to stand up at the community board to blow a whistle on this, and for my standing up, I took enormous heat from the borough president who tried to take me off the board. I fought back. Diamondstone is currently chair of the Brooklyn Solid Waste Advisory Board, and like Bear, he has run for office before. As councilman, he promises to bring reform to city government and services. The city council has rules that make it uh, unable to be a real counterbalance to the mayor. Brooklyn-born engineer and father of three, Doug Viviano, believes health care needs to be front and center in this election. He wants to see a single-payer system brought to the borough. It is simply taxpayer-funded uh, health care that is delivered privately by private doctors and private hospitals. The existing medical delivery system stays exactly the same. There's nothing to fear about it, about this system, okay? It is the best system we're going to get because right now 47 million Americans and upwards of 2 million New Yorkers don't have health care. With so many different candidates running, voters will have their pick in the 33rd District Council election. And Klebenau says the candidates will have their work cut out for them, since standing out in this crowded race will be tough. But she does have some ideas. Your advice would be focus on development and show the voters that you care. Yes, and, but of course, make sure you get all the organization behind you that can. Work with the people who are in a position to help you see that the campaign is well financed and well organized um, and I think that seems to be the key to success. This is Sherry Carabin reporting for Brooklyn Review. Brooklyn Independent Television on the BCAT TV Network.